Hi guys, so this video is about five signs that you, you're not relaxed for before your race. And I'm gonna go through each one of them and I'm gonna give you what you should be doing. And it's very important that these five signs are pretty linked in with each other, but and pro, in, on the, in one level are pretty much the same thing, but I'm giving you different, um, coming from the problem from different angles. So they, they relate to you. So you might relate to one or two of these, but not the others. But what do you do if we actually got five signs that you're not relaxed and you need to be relaxed before you race? So here you go. Number one, first sign that you're not relaxed is, is that you're not confident of running well. And this is a number one thing you need to have. I remember from my racing that when I gave myself and I was in no doubt that I was gonna run well, I ran what PB, that was that was it. I ran my fastest I ever did. I remember one time when I actually turned up for an, a competition and I'd f missed, I turned up late and missed the 400 meter hurdles race. And I was annoyed, I was pissed off with myself. So, and I decided, well, I've traveled down here. I'm not going to come away here without a race. So I entered into a late entry into the 400 meters and I decided I'm not coming out of here without a PB. And I was by way not, not even close to my fittest because I'd come back from an injury for that previous month, an hamstring injury. I was, but I was damned if I was going to do a rubbish race. And I gave myself the direction, my mental direction that I was going to run well. And when I gave myself the mental direction, my physical capabilities followed me. And when I said, I'm not coming out, I was so determined and I was in no doubt that I was going to run well that I did, I ran fast. And you need to have that, that's, that's confidence. That's giving yourself no doubt that you will run well. You need to harness that when you're racing. So if you look back on your previous race and you find that you weren't completely confident that you're gonna run well, then you know that's gonna give your mind a kind of desper desperation. It's gonna go into uncertainty. If you don't give it a physical or mental direction, then your mind is gonna be going to uncertainty. It doesn't know what it's going to, what's coming up. And when it goes into uncertainty, it's going to go into a free state. So you need to give you, um, your kind of body a kind of mental direction to follow. And that you, the mental direction is confident that you can, you, you're going to run well. It can, that can be harnessed by visualization if you wish, but it has to come down to that point. Whatever you do has to come down to that point that you're on the start line and you're just pure and simply going to run well. So number two is that it's linked in with number one again. It's number two, it's the second sign that you're not relaxed is that you've allowed nerves to get the better of you. Now, nerves are basically based on fear. It's fear of not doing well at you, in your race. It's, it's the fear of probably letting people down. It's the fear of whatever it is. It's you, everything's condensed down into these race that lasts seconds. So you've condensed down all your training into this race and that's lasting seconds that you have to get right. And when that happens, you, and you're not confident, then nerves will get the better of you. Outside factors will start to think. Fear starts to come. What happens if I don't run well? Am I am I letting someone down? Um, I'm 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 racing in front of people, which is a, a fear, a legitimate fear for for athletes. I'm exposing myself to something, and I'm exposing to myself to something that I care about. I'm I need to run well. And I'll come back to needing later on. But if once you get this, nerves start to come in, these fears start to come in, you need to separate yourself from those fears and notice and trying to use those fears and nerves as energy. So they're a benefit for you. So that means to actually practice your thoughts. You, you actually have to do this outside your racing. You actually have to practice it. But you have to be able to separate yourself out from your thoughts, your nerves. You have to separate yourself and say your nerves are not you. And once you do that, separate yourself and bring yourself back to yourself, bring yourself back to yourself, how you are right now, then you're not allowing nerves to help you. And once you change, watch your nerves, you can use them as a benefit, as energy for you. So, and, and the psychologist has showed that actually fear is very close to excitement. So you can actually make, once you separate yourself and watch your, your nerves and watch yourself getting nerves, you can change it to excitement, which can be benefit, beneficial for you for your race. So that's the way, don't let nerves get the better of you. And the third sign as well is to allow, this helps you handle nerves is you're not, there's two parts to this next one actually. Third sign that you're not relaxed for racing is that you're not aware of your breath. Firstly, and when you're not aware of your breath, you're not here, okay, in this present moment, and you're thinking too much. So you need to be aware of your breath. 
The second thing is, well, belly breathing. You need to be able to breathe correctly. So go back and watch my video here on this card to learn how to breathe correctly. That is the number one fundamental foundation for human performance is breathing. Now, it's, 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 it, there's two requirements for the, for the body, for, human, for, for the human body to survive. It's to move and to breathe and breathe. Your movement will be, um, will be handicapped if you can't breathe correctly. So go back and watch my video on it. But breathing, it, number one, not being aware of your breath. Number two, not being able to breathe correctly. And that sometimes for athletes is, it takes a bit of practice to breathe, to belly breathe through your, your, kind of through your belly and not letting your chest and shoulders rise like this. A lot of people, when they're anxious, they come into a pressure situation, they go into fight or fight and they just start to breathe like this. So you need to make sure that you're actually breathing correctly. But number one, being aware of your breath. So you're in the present moment. Number two is that you can breathe correctly. And once you breathe correctly, you allow all the oxygen, more oxygen into the body and which allow more oxygen to the body means more energy, oxygen to the muscles, which means more energy. And then your hip muscles start to function. So you're going to feel lighter. So once you breathe correctly in the, those times, you can not only bring more energy to your body, but you can handle your nerves better and probably help your confidence as well. So that's the third sign. The fourth sign is that you struggle to stop thinking. Again, it's linked in with the others. It's not. It's linked in with letting nerves get the better of you. It's linked in with not being confident. So when you not think, when if you can't stop thinking, then you're um, you're not here and now, which is where you need to be. You're not relaxed. Here and now is where you relax. This present moment. But if you're thinking about, I've got to get a decent start here. I've got to be fast out the blocks. I've got to. Um, start well, I've got to pump my arms, make, I've got to run quickly around the first bend if I'm running a 200, I've got to get a great start for the, you're not, if you're thinking about all that, you're not going to be relaxed, you're going to be tense up because you think about things you need to do. And as I say, when I'm coming to needing and wanting in a minute, but if you're in a state of needing and wanting, you're not relaxed. You're tensing up. You need to be here and now in the present moment. And once you're confident, then you have, don't have to think about these other things. And you need to practice yourself, bringing yourself into the present moment to stop your thing. It's come through meditation that can help you, but it constantly likes it pattern interrupts throughout the day. So you need to think about just notice that yourself, you have, your mind is wandering and bring yourself back to the present moment. And so you practice yourself doing that. And once you practice yourself bringing to the present moment, then you're going to be more relaxed. So that's the fourth thing. Fourth sign you're not relaxed is that you, you're overthinking or you're thinking at all. You've got to be able to bring the present moment in and stop thinking. The fourth one is needing and wanting to run too much, run well too much. And that need and want, and it especially comes from the years or the months and months of, uh, of training, all the years of training, actually. So the months and months of training leading up to this race that's only going to last 10 seconds, 20 seconds, not under 45 seconds, whatever it is, whether it's 200, 200, 400, it's, it's a relatively small amount of time. And that relatively smaller time is condensed. You've got to get everything right in those races. And when that happens, then you're going to need to run well, that need to run well. You need, I've trained all this time, I need to perform in this race. And it's the pressure you put on yourself. The need to run well becomes a pressure on you. And it's the need to run well is a feeling, it's a desperation. It's a desperation to run well. And you can't run well with that desperation. You are going to tense up. So if you're needing and wanting to run well too much, then you, you, you're wanting this future too much. You're wanting the future that's going to be, I'm going to be a better person once I've achieved this. I'm not happy now with what I haven't achieved. I'm going to be a better person when I achieve. So that's not going to help you either. So you need to be able to, check your needing and wanting. Once you do the four other things above you, you breathe correctly. Number funda one, fundamental thing that you need to do is breathe correctly. You take away, you put yourself in the present moment and then you're not needing and wanting. And you've got to watch that. So those are five signs that you are not relaxed for, for sprinting. And these are things that you can ultimately, don't have to take a hell of a long time, might take practice, we can instantly, once you know these things, then you can instantly change it for your next race, whenever your next race is going to be. So check with yourself, be honest with yourself about those five things. Go and journal how you feel before a race and, and gauge it and compare it against those things that I've just, signed, that I've just given you. 
And once you do that, then you're going to put yourself in a relaxed state to run well. And relaxation is so important for, for sprinting. You need it. You need it. And we underestimate the power of it and we underestimate the importance of it. So hopefully that video was helpful for you. If you could like the video, I would appreciate it. If you could share it, I would appreciate it. And just let me just say thanks for watching.